Welcome to Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. The UN's human rights chief and the head of EU foreign policy are the latest leaders to call for urgent de escalation in the Middle East amidst reports of a possibly imminent retaliatory attack from Iran against Israel and mounting fears of an all out regional war. President Biden met with his national security team Monday, and the U.S. CENTCOM commander arrived in Israel earlier today. Foreign embassies are evacuating their citizens from Lebanon and the region. Meanwhile, U.S. military personnel were injured Monday in a suspected rocket attack on Al Assad Air Base in Iraq. Secretary of State Antony Blinken spoke Monday. We are engaged in intense diplomacy, um, pretty much round the clock, with a very simple message. All parties must refrain from escalation. All parties must take steps to ease tensions. Escalation is not in anyone's interests. Uh, it will only lead to more conflict, more violence, more insecurity. Israel's killed at least eight Palestinians in the occupied West Bank amidst an ongoing bloody raid in Janine and other sites. In Tubas, Israeli forces killed at least four people. This is the brother of one of the victims. His three-year-old son saw his father on the floor bleeding. He is three years old. He's the only one who saw his father bleeding and told us what he saw. Meanwhile, Israel's finance minister, Bezalel Smotrich, suggested starving the entire Gaza Strip to death could be justified. He told a conference, quote, nobody will let us cause two million civilians to die of hunger, even though it might be justified and moral until our hostages are returned, unquote. Smotrich also repeated the Israeli government's goal of, quote, removing the threat, unquote, of Palestinian statehood. The U.N. reported child malnutrition in the Gaza Strip jumped nearly 50 percent in July over the previous month due to Israel's relentless attacks and total blockade. Bangladesh's president has dissolved parliament, clearing the way for new elections to take place following the resignation of Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, who fled the country Monday after weeks of student-led protests. Just hours after Hasina's departure, the Bangladeshi president, Mohammad Shahabuddin, ordered the release of jailed opposition leader Khaleda Zia, a longtime rival rival of Hasina. The streets of Dhaka erupted in celebration Monday in response to her ouster. As the military is set to appoint an interim government, student leaders have called on Bangladeshi Nobel Peace Prize laureate Mohammed Yunus to be at its head. We will not accept any other government other than the one proposed by us. We will not accept the government supported by the military or the fascists. Any proxy government or government against the people will not be accepted. Bangladeshi security forces have killed over 400 people since anti-government protests began in June, including some 100 protesters over the weekend before Sheikh Hasina stepped down. We'll go to Dhaka later in the broadcast. In Washington, D.C., a federal judge ruled Monday Google's illegally maintained a monopoly over Internet searches by paying billions of dollars to Apple and other smartphone companies and web browsers to be their default search engine. The historic decision comes after a lawsuit brought by the Justice Department and a group of attorneys general from 38 states and territories. It's the largest antitrust lawsuit brought by the U.S. government against a major tech company since the DOJ sued Microsoft over 20 years ago. Judge Amit Mehta wrote in his ruling, quote, Google is a monopolist, and it's acted as one to maintain its monopoly. We'll have more on this story after headlines. The Democratic National Committee's virtual roll call vote ended with Kamala Harris receiving 99 percent of delegate votes. Kamala Harris will be announcing her vice presidential pick this morning ahead of a rally in Philadelphia later today, where she'll appear with her running mate. The two finalists are reportedly Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro and Minnesota Governor Tim Walz. In other election news, progressive Missouri Congress member Cori Bush faces re-election in her primary race today, after APAC spent some $9 million to unseat her and boost her challenger, St. Louis County Prosecutor Wesley Bell. We'll have more on this story later in the broadcast.
In Arizona, Donald Trump's former campaign lawyer, Jenna Ellis, has flipped and agreed to cooperate with prosecutors in Arizona's fake elector case. Ellis, who worked to overturn Trump's 2020 loss in Arizona, will avoid jail time as part of the deal, where she could testify against the 17 remaining defendants in the case, including Rudy Giuliani and Mark Meadows. In financial news, Japanese shares rebounded today after global stock markets plunged Monday as fears of a U.S. recession triggered a massive sell-off. It was the worst day for the Japanese stock market since a crash in 1987. Stocks also rallied across Europe today. In July, the U.S. added 114,000 jobs, and the unemployment rate rose to 4.3 percent, a much dimmer report than economists predicted. Last week, the Fed kept interest rates at a two-decade high, ahead of expected cuts over this fall and winter. As temperatures soar across the globe this summer, the World Health Organization says extreme heat is responsible for over 175,000 deaths each year in Europe. Here in the U.S., western states continue to battle a raging wildfire season. So far this year, wildfires have burned more than four and a half million acres across the United States. In the southeast, Tropical Storm Debbie is making its way across Georgia and coastal South Carolina after killing at least four people as it barreled through Florida on Monday. In Brazil, a group of armed assailants and farmers over the weekend attacked indigenous communities that had reclaimed stolen land in the state of Mato Grosso do Sul. The violent rampage left at least 10 Guarani and Caua people injured in the attackers as the attackers fired gunshots, rubber bullets and set ablaze tents that had been placed by indigenous people on their land. More Brazilian authorities have been deployed to the region in response, while prosecutors consider opening a criminal investigation. Similar attacks against indigenous communities in Mato Grosso do Sul, near the Brazilian Amazon, have been on the rise, as farmers and others exploit land to plant soy for export or raise cattle to produce beef. The U.S. has abandoned its last military base in Niger and completed the withdrawal of its forces, ending a years-long failed counterterrorism mission in the West African country and fulfilling a crucial demand by Niger's ruling military junta. Niger's expulsion of U.S. troops follows a military coup a year ago. Niger's former colonizer, France, was also forced to pull out its troops last year. In Nigeria, anti-government protests against economic inequality and hunger are continuing, defying a request by President Bola Tinubu and a deadly crackdown by security forces. Half a dozen Nigerian states have imposed curfews. At least 13 people have been killed since the nationwide protest started Thursday last week. Yeah, which symbolizes hunger. There is terrible hunger in Nigeria. Do you understand? And my appearance today is to showcase the anger in me. Do you understand? In other news about Nigeria, the Nigerian foreign ministry joined other nations in warning their citizens about travel to the United Kingdom amid worsening far-right anti-immigrant riots. Kenya, Malaysia and Indonesia also issued safety warnings, as the unrest continued last night, one week after misinformation about a mass stabbing triggered the far-right riots. A man in Belfast was hospitalized after being attacked in a suspected hate crime. In Olympics news, Brazilian gymnast Rebecca Andrade and U.S. gymnast Simone Biles and Jordan Childs made history Monday as they accepted their medals for the first ever all black podium in either men's or women's gymnastics. Simone Biles has won three golds and a silver in Paris, making her the most decorated U.S. gymnast in Olympic history. Biles and Childs bowed down to Andrade, who had not one, not two, but three torn ACLs, and yet still ultimately got gold. In other news from the Paris Games, Algerian boxer Iman Eglif has called for an end to bullying in sports after suffering a torrent of abuse amidst invasive and hateful speculation over so-called gender eligibility requirements. Khalif has guaranteed at least a bronze medal after winning a match Saturday. Meanwhile, Belgium withdrew from the mixed relay triathlon Monday, and Switzerland had to reorder its roster after both countries' athletes became sick after completing races in the Seine River last week. And Japan is marking the 79th anniversary of the U.S. dropping the world's first atomic bomb in Hiroshima, killing some 140,000 people. Three days later, 
On August 9, 1945, the U.S. dropped another atomic bomb on the Japanese city of Nagasaki, killing an estimated 74,000 people. Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida spoke earlier today. Japan is the only country to have been hit by nuclear weapons during a war. It is our mission to continue to make an effort to realize a world free from nuclear weapons. Ahead of the annual peace memorial ceremony in Hiroshima, Palestinian rights protesters gathered to condemn the presence of Israel's ambassador to Japan amidst the war on Gaza. Protesters chanted, quote, Israel is not welcome here in Hiroshima. And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman in New York, joined by Juan Gonzalez in Chicago. Hi, Juan. Hi, Amy, and welcome to all of our listeners and viewers across the country and around the world.